So I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is just like with Photoshop, you cannot edit raw files directly in the GIMP app. Instead, there's a raw editor that works in conjunction with GIMP and it's called Darktable. For those of you new to Darktable, it's a free alternative for editing your raw files that is similar to Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. And just like with Lightroom, you can manage your images by sorting with label stars and keywords. Plus, it works seamlessly with GIMP. And did I mention it's free? All right. So installing Darktable is super easy to do. And to download it, you're going to go to darktable.org, click on install right here and choose your operating system to download it. And then you can install it just like any other app. That's it. You now have Darktable installed. So let's go ahead and jump into Darktable and take a look at what it has to offer. So once you have Darktable open, you're going to be in the Lighttable view and you can do a few different things in here. One is importing your images from your hard drive or from your camera. You can also organize your images by adding tags and keywords. You can add color labels. You can also rate those images with the star system down here. And then next to Lighttable, we have a darkroom module. And next to that, we have other. So other is going to include additional modules that are similar to Lightroom. So we have a map module, which is going to list your images on a map based on geographic location. And then you have a print module slideshow. And if you want to tether your camera to your computer, you can do that with this tethering option. And then when you create an image, Darktable will automatically import that image into Lighttable for you. So Darkroom is where all the magic happens for your editing. But before you can get in there, you need to select at least one image. And when you hover over this, you're going to see that keyboard shortcut for getting into Darkroom is the letter D and Lighttable is the letter L. All right, let's go into Darkroom. So like I said, this is where all the magic happens when you want to edit your images. And if you're transitioning from Lightroom to Darktable, you're going to notice there's a lot more tools and features versus Lightroom. So you have a lot more ways to edit your images based on your creative vision. Now, before we get into that, let's take a look at this left panel over here. We have a couple of options here that makes editing your images much easier. So to kind of streamline your workflow, you can use snapshots to take different versions of your edit and save them for future use. And we also have a history panel here, which is pretty cool because it's going to record every edit that you apply to your image. And if you decide that you don't like the direction that the edit is going in, you can go back in time by coming in here and selecting one of these editing options. And then everything above it will be removed from your image. That way you can restart your edit from here versus restarting from scratch. Now over here on the right side, we have our editing tools and they're divided up into different categories. Now there's around 50 to 60, maybe 70 different editing tools that you have available for editing your images. Now, just like with GIMP, you're probably going to use 20% of these tools 80% of the time. And we're going to cover those later in the course. I'm also going to show you right now how to customize each one of these panels to only include the editing tools that you'll want to use. Because personally, I probably use only around 20 of the 60 or so tools available for editing. So I don't like to have the clutter of all these different editing tools that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to show you that in just a second. So the first category right here, or the first tab is the quick access panel, which is going to list the tools that you're probably going to use the most often. So local contrast, exposure, lens correction, denoise, white balance, and a couple others as well. Now the next module here is going to list all the editing tools that you've used for the image that is currently visible. So as you continue adding more edits and using new tools, they will be listed here. All right. So the next module is the technical editing tools. So this is going to list things like the output color profile, a base curve, the cropping tool, and much more. Now you may notice that there's a lot of editing tools in here that were included in the quick access panel, like exposure and I believe white balance is in here as well. So we can actually hide those so that they're not visible and taking up more room. Again, I'll show you that in just a second. First, 
let's take a look at the next category, which is color grading. So you have your split toning, you have color contrast, color correction, shadows and highlights, levels, tone curve, and much more. And then the final module is the effects panel. So you can add things like vignetting, grain, you can convert it to monochrome, and there's a lot of other cool options in here as well. Now, like I mentioned, I like to have each of these panels set up with only the tools that I prefer to use so that my panels are not as clustered as they are right now. So if you click on this hamburger icon right here, you're going to see all the different default workflow options available. So they even have one for beginner, display referred, scene referred. Those are some pretty advanced types of concepts here. So we're going to keep this kind of simple and just look at some of the basic editing tools that you may want to use in your editing workflow. So my workflow here is going to list only the editing tools that I selected. So once I click on that, you're going to notice there's a lot less tools than there was before. So I'm going to go back to default here and then back inside because I want to show you how to create your own workflow or your own workspace. What you're going to do is click on manage presets. You're going to duplicate the default option that has the majority of the editing tools. So once you do that, you're going to give it a new name. I'm just going to call it new for now. And then from here, you can go ahead and begin removing any editing tools that you don't want to use. Now, if you're just starting out as an editor, you're probably not going to know which ones that you're going to want to use or not use. So you may want to just stick with the default option for now. Now, if you made a mistake and removed something that you didn't want to remove, you can click on the plus icon here and then you can scroll through and find the module that you want to add back in. So once I close out of this and go back in again, you will then see my new workflow right here. Now, as far as editing your images, it works like any other raw editor. Once you select the tool that you want to use, you just adjust the slider to the left or right, and then it's going to update the preview over here on the left side where your image is, of course. And I just want to point out that you're not actually editing the raw file. Instead, you're editing a preview. So this right here is just a preview of that raw file. So what it's going to do is it's going to take these edit settings and save it as a separate file next to your raw file. So it's not going to affect the raw file at all. It's non-destructive and you can go back into that image tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now and continue making adjustments without ruining the original raw file. Now, in addition to customizing your individual editing modules here, you can also hide these individual panels. So there's one on each side. If we come over here and click on this arrow, it will hide that panel. Clicking again will reshow it. You can also hide all the panels at the same time by pressing the tab key and then clicking again to reshow it. Now, there's additional keyboard shortcuts for customizing your interface and for using Darktable in general. And we're not going to go over all those keyword shortcuts. So to see the list of keyword shortcuts available in Darktable, just hold down the letter H to show all of those keyboard shortcuts. So if we scroll down, there's a lot more. All right. Once you release H, it will go back to the original interface here. All right, so a couple more things I want to share with you real quick, and that is adjusting the size of the panels. So if we come to the inside of the panels here, we're going to get this little icon right here, and then you can drag it to the left or to the right to resize the width of the panel. And then for the thumbnail previews down here, come up to the top right here and then drag up or down to resize those thumbnail previews. All right, it's now time to get your images in the Darktable so you can start organizing and editing your images. So if you're ready for that, let's do it.